Welcome to the R video tutorial on logistic regression. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to do logistic regression in R. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is read in our data. So I read in my data and I show you how to do that in a previous video, so I shouldn't need to explain how to do that here because you can go watch a different video. All right, the next thing we'd want to do is plot our data. Now with logistic regression, your data is very different than in regular regression. Here we have a continuous predictor. However, our response can only be two values, zero and one. And in this case, we don't get a nice straight line. But what we do sort of see is that one set of grouping along zero is different than the group center of the grouping along one. And what we want to do is model the probability of being in either the group that's designed for zero or the group that's designed as one. Okay, so let's do this. Let's set this up. So the function that I'm going to use is GLM, which stands for Generalized Linear Model. That's really inconsequential for doing this. However, it's very similar to doing a regular linear model in the sense that you have your dependent variable, which is failure in this case, and temperature is predicting whether or not this uh, component is going to fail or not. And the key for logistic regression is the family statement at the end. I'm choosing it to be binomial. It will do other types of regressions as well, but in this case, we're interested in logistic regression, which is binomial. Okay, I also do a summary statement of my new variable that I created, heat.glm. And in the summary, I can get out my tests on whether or not a specific coefficient is significant or not. Now, if I come over here and look at my output, I get a p-value for temperature predicting failure. Now, looking at this p-value, I see that it is extremely small, which would indicate that, yes, temperature does have an influence or does help predict failure. Now, the estimates of the coefficients are another piece of interest. However, in the current format, they're not that useful. So this point zero five four three nine is really not useful to us. We're going to have to transform these later. Now, with as with a linear model, you can also generate confidence intervals for the coefficients using the CONFINT function. Okay, now over here you can see the confidence intervals for temperature and the intercept. However, as I mentioned above, these are not on a scale that's useful to us. These are on the log likelihood scale. So what we want to do is convert them into a scale that is more reasonable. And over here what I'm doing is I am transforming them back to a scale that corresponds to likelihood. All right, so this will make them on a scale that is more useful to us. Okay, now the coefficient that I'm really interested in is the one associated with temperature. And if I notice over here that this coefficient in the transformed format is 1.055, this means for every one unit increase in temperature, I expect a 1.05 times higher likelihood of failure or a 5% increase in the failure rate. And below I get confidence intervals on temperatures that can be interpreted in a very similar manner. So these are the quantities that we're interested in and we also have our test above. Now when we do a test we don't really need to transform them back to a useful scale because the the test is testing to see whether or not that that coefficient is equal to zero. So the test is fine that was above. All right, so this has been the R video tutorial on logistic regression. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.